Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today I am revisiting a very historically popular topic on my channel and something I've gotten a lot of asks for uh, to make kind of an updated video on, and that is Dagster versus Airflow 3.0. Um, so if you're not aware, Airflow 3.0, one of the you know the most mature orchestration tools, just released version 3.0 with a bunch of big upgrades, you know, kind of bringing it more into the asset management space and kind of bringing more of some of the capabilities that Daxter has, which has really made its focus on asset-centric workflows and having observability for those, um, bringing in some of those benefits in a new Airflow 3.0. So I think it is a good time to explore kind of the differences between Airflow 3.0 and Daxter, talk about you know what's changed, um, what sh each tools are better at, um, where tools might, or you know, Airflow or Daxter might fall short. So you have a good idea of where they both stand in this today's day and age, um, so you can make the right decision on which tool to use for your tech stack. Um, and as always, uh, if you like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. And if you join my Patreon, you can see all my videos a week early um, for completely free. So go over and do that. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the difference in architectural philosophy of you know how you're designing your pipelines in Airflow versus Dexter. Um, and Airflow is really centered around a task-based orchestration model where you have directed acyclic graphs, also referred to as DAGs more commonly, that define the execution of tasks, which are just orders of, you know, units of work, right? So producing a query um, or producing, you know, running a Python script, right? And with Airflow 3.0, you now have, you know, a lot of things like legacy decorators being removed, but also new decorators being brought in for new languages, um, better dynamic task mapping, you know, especially dynamic task mapping, the ability to scale a task infinitely, at runtime for X amount of uh, in task instances um, in parallel. Uh, you also have a much better improved notifications framework and also a much better support for the concept of data assets. Um, and so data assets within Airflow now are the ability to say, hey, this DAG is producing um, this data asset, which can represent you know, something like an S3 file um, or you know, a Snowflake table uh, and this is really kind of brought in the concept of, hey, not just tasks, but actually the outputs of these tasks as a trackable unit of ent entity. But in general, Airflow is still designed around DAGs and around tasks. Um, assets are really, you know, an add on on top of tasks, right? That can be then used to trigger downstream pipelines and have them as a scheduling entity, but still not, you know, entities of work. Now, Dagster, on the other hand, is centered around data assets. Right, and so it is an as what it calls an asset-based orchestration model, where you define data assets, which represent the tables where something's happening or the output of a task. Right, and so this is you know they refer to this as software-defined assets, which are first-class representations of you know, tasks that generates a table, um, a file, a machine learning model, um, and uses a GraphQL based metadata layer to track all of these in a data catalog as well. Um, it has a lot of out of the box support for materialization tracking, lineage and freshness policies. However, Airflow 3.0 has also brought in a lot of lineage capabilities um, where now those data sets I mentioned before can be used to track lineage um, and track operate or the operations that are occurring to those aforementioned data assets. Um, but Daxter, in all fairness, did it first. Um, and it really was designed as a data asset focused tool um, where it's really meant to have a lot of the tooling out of the box where you don't need to plug in and bring in a data cataloging tool or a data lineage tracker. You just use Dagster um, and it'll automatically track that information for you, um, which is a much more opinionated architecture that tightly couples orchestration with data context. So they live really you know, closely side by side. Um, and so with some of that, obviously you lose some of the flexibility of you know the ability to find operations that don't necessarily produce a data asset, don't produce a model, but are still necessary for you know making some movement occur during a pipeline or a sensor that's waiting for a file to appear. Um, so there are some downsides to this approach, but with you know great power and great uh, you know new features comes the sacrifice and responsibility of kind of giving up some of the flexibility that Airflow provides over Dexter. Um, so that, that's kind of just architectural experience um, at a glance. So now I want to talk about more about the developer experience. 
So Airflow is still very much a Python native, Python based uh, tool, um, but it has a come a long way in improving the developer experience and how you define DAGs with things like the task decorator where you just you know, slap on a couple lines of code to a Python function um, and then boom, now it's a task. Uh, you also have the ability to do things like dynamic task generation, um, feed in, you can see this dot partial, say, hey, I want to run this task and process every astronaut individually in parallel. Um, so it's really scaled up itself, uh, provide tools for scaling for the needs of large organizations where you may need to run a task for hundreds or thousands of different individual runs, but you can't do it all at once and you don't know how many runs you're gonna need, so you can't build that into the pipeline automatically with hard code. So dot expand method will create X amount of tasks for X amount of inputs. Um, and it, you know, there, it's done a lot to reduce the boilerplate code within a DAG. There obviously still is, you know, some boilerplate code and just the basic definition of how you're defining your DAGs. Um, but it's made a lot of strides and it's now become, you know, especially with Airflow Thread the ability to now have tasks that aren't just Python, but you can actually use this at task decorator and put it on a JavaScript, put it on a SQL script, put it on a Rust script, right? Uh, and have that still appear as an Airflow task. So removing the need to have, you know, heavy boilerplate tasks that are going out to call external scripts, really moving more towards just a decorator focused uh, viewpoint, because that's really how people like to develop. You know, they're writing their scripts and then they want to just apply a small piece of code on it to have it now run in a structured task-like manner. Now, Dagster, on the other hand, is a slightly different approach. Um, instead of it being centered around tasks and kind of boiler, you know, just adding your scripts in, adding your operations, and you know, just writing a lightweight framework for strip or organizing them together, so you have more of a declarative uh, approach where you need to you know, define configuration and define your data sources and data assets um, instead of defining tasks that actually perform operations with those data assets. Um, and it also provides you know, a, a Daggett web-based UI for actually going through and, and visualizing this metadata, um, but it really is centered around, hey, very strong type systems and input-output schemas very declarative uh, approach to make sure, hey, everything is getting processed the exact way you have chosen to do so, because you know, with a data asset focused approach, it's more commonly used for people that are very laser focused on just making sure these you know, get, uh, assets get delivered on time, or not on time, but with the proper quality. Um, and also have the option to develop locally, you, know, you have test harnesses. Honestly, the, the general development flow is pretty similar between the two tools. Um, you're still gonna be writing some more scripts, but in, with Daxter, it's very much around defining these inputs and outputs of these data sets versus Airflow. It's more about defining the actual operations that are happening there um, and, and kind of using the pre-built rails for those data sets um, as the examples. Um, so yeah, just wanted to kind of talk about the developer experience there as well. Um, and then next, so I want to talk about the two different approaches to orchestration and execution, how each of these tools handles that. So a big change in Airflow 3.0 was a massive update to the actual underlying infrastructure configuration of Airflow, um, where now you have a decoupled set of workers from an, calling to an API server, which allows for much flexible and much more decentralized scheduling. Um, and you also have different options for your schedulers already with Kubernetes for you know each task running individually, Celery for a great parallelism on a single worker node. Um, and you also have support for things like advanced trigger rules, retries, SLAs, flexible scheduling um, based on data assets arriving or being deleted. And also you have you know, the ability to actually have logic in those scheduling now where you can say if only one data set has arrived or it's 1 p.m. on a Friday, then run this job. Um, and you also have notifiers as well. You have the ability to you know just have global notifiers that call out uh, standardized templatized notifications on any failures. Um, so really a pretty robust infrastructure for you know handling and running all of your tasks efficiently uh, and then giving you easy access um, to automate the alerting um, so you only have to come in to look at tasks that have failed uh, that actually need your attention rather than you know needing to be actively monitoring them. Um, so that's really you know kind of airflow architecture on, at a glance. And so Dagster and, and Dagster Plus operates slightly differently um, where you have essentially you know a customer environment that has your user code, you have an agent that's installed there uh, that can make calls to other external services like you know where your data is actually living. Um, and your users will interact with the web front end, you know, set schedules through there. Um, and then that agent will fetch any work or schedules over uh, through, through a polling mechanism and then stream the job metadata back through a different API endpoint. 
Um, and then you also have CI CD here. So when you make updates to your DAGs, to your code, you add them to Dagster Plus, um, and then CI CD will notify, hey, through this customer Git repo, push that code to that agent. Um, and then now that will start to schedule those jobs um, from that agent, right? So different architecture in that it's, you know, you, you kind of have more of a external uh, hosting platform and then, you know, an agent that is actually living alongside your data, which has pros and cons, you know, downside is you have data going or, you know, have API traffic going in and out of that environment. Um, and also just, you know, dividing the infrastructure of where it actually lives um, isn't always the best approach, but there are benefits to it as well. Um, and here you also have, you know, that aforementioned UI where you can go in, you, you know, can set things like alerts um, and, and backfills as well, um, partition assets, um, and assets themselves define that upstream downstream dependencies. Um, and you also have, you know, because you are basically setting this agent up independently, you have complete control over the resources used. Um, and this will dynamically plan and track data lineage for you and send that information back uh, to that web front end. So again, you know, similarly to how Airflow tracks lineage, saves it, uh, Daxter is as well, but it also provides a visualization layer alongside, which is where Airflow instead relies on other tools to visualize that lineage information for you. So now uh, the area I want to talk about is observability and lineage. Um, and this is an area that's becoming especially pertinent uh, in today's day and age in the dataverse. Um, you have a lot of organizations making big investments in data observability and tracking lineage. Um, and Airflow has as well. Um, so Airflow has really spent a lot of the development's time in the past you know, year enhancing observability, uh, bringing in standard, standard notifiers, improving metadata, um, but also bringing in first class support for open lineage. So before you needed to you know, define a lineage extractor for your task that you want to get lineage data from. Now in Airflow 2.7, Air open lineage is native. Um, so open lineage will be automatically generated by your tasks. And then you can set an open lineage backend and your environment variables to send that information out to whatever you're using to visualize open lineage. Um, and so this has been a massive stride forward for Airflow and kind of really opens it up to start becoming, you know, the true partner to those data cataloging tools, to those data lineage trackers, um, because it's already managing all your interactions. Why not have it also collect and send out the information around those interactions instead of having to have a whole tool dedicated to it? So really something where we're going to see Airflow continue to develop on, you know, that's why data assets were built into the platform. That's why there's now the ability to have data entities within Airflow. Um, and so really it's where I see, you know, kind of a lot of integrations and use cases coming out in Airflow 3.0 because now it's a lot easier to uh, do so. Um, and Dagster, on the other hand, has started with observability from the jump. So with Dagster, uh, similar to Airflow, you don't need to add anything uh, to start collecting lineage around your uh, data sets and your data assets within Dagster. Um, it has full lineage tracking, uh, there's no need to set it up. Um, it also collects the same kind of logs, metadata um, in Dagit, which you're seeing an example of here. So you'll see what views have been materialized, um, you know, the logs and updates to that are accessible under each data asset. Um, and you can also set asset health checks to make sure that uh, every time they've been updated, it's been a healthy update by checking the lineage as well. Um, so here, you know, the approach is that instead of sending the lineage out like Airflow does, Dagster keeps lineage within the platform, and so you can actually view the lineage of each individual uh, data asset by just clicking into it within Dagster and um, viewing the most recent changes to the data lineage. Um, so, you know, it's really kind of an all-in-one approach versus a more modular approach where you, you know, have different tools to do what they're best at. Dagster wants to go all in one and say, hey, you don't need to buy a data lineage tool, you use us for it. Um, versus Airflow is saying, hey, you probably already have a data lineage tool. Why don't, or for visualization, why don't we just send our raw lineage data to there so you can visualize it using your existing infrastructure? Um, so that's really kind of the paradigm difference between these two, uh, between, Air, or between Airflow and Dagster. So now finally, I want to talk about the extensibility and ecosystem of the two tools. Um, so number one, Airflow's probably biggest benefit is its vast plugin ecosystem. Um, there's already over 1,500 different defined connectors, um, you know, for Snowflake, BigQuery, S3, but also down the curve tools like High Spot, HubSpot, um, and really almost any major SaaS tool you can think of. Um, but not only that, it's really easy to create and standardize on custom operators, hooks, custom operations that you templatize and can use across many DAGs um, for services that you might use or internal services for your company that no one else has access to. Um, and it works really well also for heterogeneous environments, you know, connect, connect to both on-prem and cloud resources equally easily. 
So it's a really great choice if you have you know, a very diverse tech stack or you have a lot of custom integrations and you need a broad compatibility uh, if you have you know, some legacy tooling and some cloud tooling. Um, Dagster, on the other hand, has a much smaller ecosystem. Um, their, you know, their focus on data assets means they've just, you know, be, they require a deeper connection with each of the uh, tools they're actually integrating with. Um, so they have, looks like about 100 different integrations. Um, and there is some capacity for building your own uh, connectors as well, but because DAX requires such a tight integration with data assets, you'll need to build all that yourself for a custom operator. Um, so th there's a lot more barrier to entry to actually connecting it to uh, more, you know, kind of less supported systems. Um, but if you're only using, you know, you know your, the classic DBT Snowflake S3 tech stack, you got everything you need here. Um, and it's very much a cloud native uh, deployment option. So it doesn't really have a lot of connections to on-prem services. And as I just described, uh, building your own connectors is pretty difficult. So you really do need to be more of a cloud uh, native business to truly get a lot of value out of Dagster. Um, but you know, while it's less extensive uh, than Airflows, those integrations are you know developed by Dagster itself, um, and so they are, I'd say, a bit more battle tested. Um, and also, you know, they need to have that deep connection to actually work uh, with Dagster because it needs to have that understanding of the data assets that it might be producing. Um, so that's really all I wanted to cover today. Um, and just kind of to summarize, I guess, you know, give you my, you know, I'm trying to be as objective as possible here. Obviously, I'm a bit more biased towards Airflow, but I really wanted to look at each tool from an objective viewpoint here. Um, and they're both good orchestration tools. You know, they're both very powerful orchestration tools, but they are for slightly different paradigms. Um, Airflow 3.0 is really more for more mature enterprise organizations that need general purpose task orchestration especially if you already have, you know, existing Airflow deployments or, you know, some kind of Airflow or Python SQL usage uh, already. Um, if you have a really wide tech stack, you know, across different types of systems, on-prem versus cloud, uh, or just, you know, a lot of systems that you've developed internally in-house and you need the flexibility to interact with those. Um, and also you, you want to be able to do things, not just interacting with data assets, you, know, you want to be able to trigger other types of operations and have the flexibility to integrate with every tool within your data stack and use Airflow as that single pane of glass to monitor your entire data stack. Dagster is more if, you know, hey, I'm just building a data orchestration or data pipeline team. I don't have data observability. I don't have any of the existing tech tools that, you know, Airflow can really easily plug into. Um, and I need something that's gonna be asset focused from the gym. <laughs> that's really where Dagster excels is if, hey, I don't have a tech team, I'm a small organization. Um, I just want to quickly stand up some simple data asset pipelines, track them, make sure that they have a high degree of certainty that these are gonna produce solid, good data uh, without needing to actually build in all those guarantees and build in all the connectors and extractors to get all the information and metadata uh, around the, those data assets. Um, also is you know a bit more of a modern kind of cloud-based developer experience. You know, I would say Airflow is definitely more code-based. Um, and so really while you know Airflow is the industry standard for large enterprises, um, you know, I didn't even really get into uh, the concept of having multiple teams isn't really an idea on Daxter. Um, Airflow is very much designed, you know, for scale, for across, use across an organization um, versus Daxter is really designed just for kind of tailored data asset, data lineage specific use cases um, where you don't already have existing data lineage tools to plug in and instead need a, you know, kind of out of the box solution where you're just going to plug in, you know, your kind of big cloud tools and start immediately tracking, you know, the lineage and things from those simple pipelines. Um, so that's all I got for you today. Just wanted to explore this video because I've been getting some comments on it with the release of Airflow 3.0. So I hope this was helpful to everyone who got there to ask for it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.